While I really wanted to document everything, more than anything, I wanted to live it. I wanted to be the band. The camera allowed me entree to a world I would not have had entree to. And I wanted my photography to capture that world from the point of view of the musician. When I first started writing a book on English rock and roll, I brought my camera with me and I had done an interview with Eric Clapton. We're sitting in his room and we were smoking some hash and he was going through the transcripts and I had a stack of proof sheets. And at one point, Eric said, um, oh, so what are these, man? And I said, well, they're just proof sheets, you know, stuff I've been working on. And he says, can I see these? I said, yeah, sure. So he started looking through them and he goes, he says, hey, man, these are great. He says, can we use these? And I said, for what? He says, um, songbooks, albums. He says, look, man, we'll pay you. And I said, sure, great. And he says, listen, the writing's all right, but you should be like doing this for a gig. And that was the segue going from writing into photography. The band that probably epitomized what I stood for is The Clash in the late 70s, early 80s. They were angry, but they were very politicized too. They really had a message. They were talking about the working class. They were talking about shit going down in Brixton. And it was relevant then, it's relevant now. You know, Blondie had just come back from Japan and they were just starting to really break big. And I remember picking them up at their hotel in the Tenderloin. And we went upstairs onto the roof. We did some shots there to start with. And then we came out here and it was a beautiful spring day. And I thought this would be the perfect place to shoot because they had a lot of bright clothing on and the greenery here and the light. She was one of these people, as soon as you pointed the camera at her, she came alive. That was toward the end of the first half of The Who's tour in 1976. The lights were going up and everybody in Winterland, and it seemed to me like everybody in the world, was on their feet and they were screaming and the band was just at a crescendo and Townsend threw his guitar up. And I remember right after that, it ended, you know, Moon came down on the drums, a drum, you know, drum crash, stood up on a stool and then collapsed over the drum kit down onto the stage and they drug him off, and that was it. Perfect end to a great night. Leonard Skinner were the kind of guys you go to war with. You know, I first met them in 1973. They opened up for The Who on that Who tour. Leonard Skinner had three guitarists. They took the stage and they fucking killed. They blazed through a set. They took no prisoners and then they lived hard. The Faces were probably one of the most fun bands ever to see. Talk about lifestyle. Rod Stewart, to this day, has the best blues voice for a white man I've ever heard. For me, I've never considered myself a photographer. I've always considered myself sort of a cross between an artist, a documentarian, somebody that experiences. I've always wanted to portray, for anyone looking at the picture, the feeling of the person I'm shooting. I want you to get the feeling that you are that person.